Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's important that constituents know why their members vote for and against different things. And yesterday we saw the uh, reauthorization of the Export Import Bank, and, and I voted no on that. And of course, I, like probably every single member of Congress, has businesses in the district that I represent that use the Export Import Bank to further their business, hire their employees, and, and help their community. So why would somebody vote against the Export Import Bank? I'm here to tell you why. See, we have a tradition in America of a free market value, and it's one that's standing in the world. It's not by a corrupt system of cronyism and political favor. And that's what the Export-Import Bank is to me. Unfortunately, while many small businesses in, in every community uh, use the Export-Import Bank, fully 98% of businesses don't use the Export-Import Bank to do their exporting, 98%. But that's not really the issue. The issue is other things. For instance, between 2007 and 2014, more than 51 percent of all XM subsidies benefited just 10, 10 corporations. One in particular benefited from $66.7 billion in subsidies during the past seven years. We can't fix Social Security and we can't afford our military. We can assure, afford for 10 corporations to get 51 percent because it's not really about the small business in your community, generally speaking. As a matter of fact, foreign firms that receive most of XM financing are large corporations that primarily purchase exports from the U.S. conglomerates, not from Main Street businesses. Five of top ten buyers are state-controlled, state controls and break in millions of dollars from their own governments in addition to XM bank subsidies that the taxpayers are on the hook for. Five of ten are involved in exploration, development, and production of oil and gas. These foreign firms collecting subsidies from American taxpayers at the same time that this administration is restricting domestic oil and gas operations right here at home. Consequently, the federal government has doubly disadvantaged U.S. energy firms through excessive regulation and Exxon bank subsidies granted to foreign competitors. Now, sometimes in Washington, it's not what you know, but it's who you know. Of the 16 members of the XM Bank's 2014 Advisory Committee, half, fully half, were executives at companies or unions that directly benefited from XM financing during their term. Fully half. Does that sound, does that sound remotely suspicious to anybody? Another five members represent companies or unions that received XM assistance shortly before they joined. And I'll give you an example. Since 2011, former Energy Secretary and New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson has held a seat on Spanish energy company Abengoa's International Advisory Board. Shortly after joining the firm, Mr. Richardson was appointed to XM Advisory Board right around the same time the two XM bank loans benefiting Abengoa Abengoa were issued. Fascinating coincidence. Those taxpayer back loans totaled around $150 million. Supporters of XM argue that the advisory committee members being associated with their beneficiaries is a positive feature. To the contrary, I think it shows that a corporate cronyism, uh, uh, that that, that uh, atmosphere exists at XM and will continue to exist at XM. The Office of the IG and the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, repeatedly document mismanagement, dysfunction within XM, including inefficient policies and procedures to guard against waste, fraud, and Fully 124 investigations have been initiated between October 2007 and March 2014, as well as 792 separate claims involving more than half a billion dollars. 74 administrative actions since April 2009, in which bank officials were forced to act internally on the basis of investigations by the Inspector General. The Congressional Budget Office reported that XM programs actually operated a deficit, because we also are told that it makes the American taxpayer money. But we don't really know, because they use their own accounting system, not used anywhere else. And actually, the CBO says that it will cost taxpayers two billion dollars in the next decade and you wonder why certain members of congress 
don't vote for this thing. It's not about the small businesses in our communities that are trying to do a good job and play by the rules because they are doing a good job and play by the rules. But there is a bigger issue here. There's more to the story. Now, the new bill that we just passed guarantees an audit every four years, every four years. But keep in mind that XM currently has around 30 open investigations. I've got 30 more seconds, Mr. Speaker. All right, I'll All right, close. Continue. 75 years of combined prison time, 90 criminal indictments and complaints, 49 criminal ju uh, judgments, more than 223 million in court ordered fines and restitutions, and I could go on. Mr. Speaker, the XM Bank doesn't do everything it could for small business, but it does a lot for people that know people in this town, and that's why it must be reformed or ended. Thank you. I yield back.